The war in Ukraine is threatening to immensely increase hunger in the world as millions of tons of agricultural products sit in Ukrainian ports for shipment being prevented by a Russian blockade. Could space technology help fight famine on Earth? That is a question researchers have been trying to answer at the Living Planet Symposium of the European Space Agency, which is taking place in the German city of Bonn this weekend. The technical possibilities of observing our planet from space is becoming quite sophisticated. And agriculture can also benefit. It's not just Ukrainian farmers that can see the state of their country's wheat fields. Satellites can too. It takes six days for the European Space Agency's satellites to map every field in the world. Space information on agriculture brings the transparency to the agriculture market helping them to avoid speculation in the market uh, pricing of certain crop uh, staples, such as wheat and mice. This is what the satellite data looks like on a computer. These are the fields east of Kyiv. The high-resolution images can show the state of vegetation and harvest. Different filters help analyze the images. For example, the various stages of photosynthesis can be tracked. Research institutions and private companies use this data. Those features can tell us something on how good or how bad the plants are growing, what kind of plants are growing on those fields, and also um, which management techniques, well, not all of the agricultural management, but a lot of the agricultural management are being um, uh, implicated on the field. WITO evaluates the satellite information and combines it with other data, from drones, for example. With it, even individual ears of corn can be counted. The data enables software and artificial intelligence to deliver more accurate harvest forecasts. The main interest for data like this is coming from um, governments and international organizations. But there are also private players that are interested, um, large, uh, large agro-food industry, but also farmers themselves um, are interested in this kind of information. This year, Ukraine's wheat harvest is expected to be just two-thirds of its usual size. That's according to a French company which analyzes this satellite data. Even though shortages cannot be avoided, this information can help to address them. In Davos, DW Editor-in-Chief Manuela Kasparkarich met with the European Space Agency's CEO, Josef Aschbacher, and she asked him what the agency's data tells us about the current global food crisis. The state is uh, actually, I would say, alarming in some countries, especially Ukraine now. Ukraine, of course, being known as, uh, as the, 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 the area where most of the wheat uh, is being produced for, for many other countries, not only for Russia, uh, not only for, uh, the, for, the, for our other uh, parts of the planet. So, yes, uh, there we see, of course, a huge impact because many fields are not being prepared. Uh, because they cannot be prepared uh, because of the conflict that is ongoing. So yes, there we will miss uh, a huge uh, uh, amounts of, uh, of harvests uh, which will not be coming. And yes, we can, we can see that. Uh, the question then, of course, is uh, how can we identify other areas uh, in order to compensate for that and, uh, and, and work on this. And this is something that we use routinely since many decades already uh, in Africa, for example, where we use our satellites to estimate the production of agricultural crops uh, in a country of certain crop types. And uh, this is uh, actually one of the oldest uh, applications uh, of Earth observation, uh, where uh, in order to really determine the use of, um, uh, the use of satellites for food security. Now, the commonization of space seems to be gaining speed now. What's your take on that? Uh, what's my take? Um, of course, this is something that uh, happens globally. Uh, Europe is a little bit behind in this curve uh, because the commercialization goes much faster in the US. Uh, we see it, of course, through uh, SpaceX and uh, Amazon and uh, other, uh, other, I would say, rich people who are investing in it. But also many investors uh, in Silicon Valley, for example, are creating a completely new environment. And that's also happening in Europe. And that's something I also would like to do because I would like to create an environment uh, in Europe uh, where uh, small companies, startups uh, can develop businesses uh, uh, through new services, uh, new constellations, uh, new activities they are building up. And yes, commercialization is a big topic also for me.